So we'll start looking at uh, chapter 5 uh, in Mark Minimini's book, Trade Line Stock Market Wizard. Um, my success, so the chapter is about trading with the trend. Um, so that's, yeah, I think the trend is so important. Um, so here's what he says. My success as a stock trader relies on a combination of science and art. So that's, you know, very important. Um, and then down later, simply put, no matter how good a company looks fundamentally, certain technical standards must be met for it to qualify as a buy candidate. For example, I'll never go along a, a, a stock that is trading below the 200-day moving average. So that's um that's his first rule, two hundred day moving average. And then on the next page, I won't consider buying a stock that is in the long term downtrend. Why? I want to see some interest in the stock, preferably from big institution investors. I'm not interested in being the first one to the party. And then the last sentence, however, if you want to increase the odds, you should focus on stocks that are in confirmed uptrend. So I think this is very important, especially at at mm -hmm. this early stage um, of where we at right now. Um, if this is the bull market, a lot of stocks um, may not be the leaders, and so if you jump in too early, you 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 may you know um, you know get chopped up in a sense. Um, so that's why like if you're gonna hold a stock for longer term, it's much better to find stocks that are already have the 200 day uptrend and mm -hmm. and you know uh, so those ones usually mean like say like he said like institution investors are already in it so that's why uh, uh, there's a higher chance of uh, success in that sense um, so next section making friends with the trend and you know in other words the trend is your friend and then in the last paragraph there, the ideal scenario was to buy stocks when they're coming out of the first stage and beginning to make a run higher, which is the second stage. Then the objective is to sell them as they approach the peak of the cycle, which is the beginning of the third stage. The fourth stage is a full-fledged decline that you want to avoid and, you know, possibly go short. Um, so this is a, a study he did from uh, Stan's approach in the book Secrets for Profiting in Bull and Bear Markets. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, so we basically talk about the four-stage life cycle of a super performance stock. And next next session, uh, basically go into more a little bit more detail about super performance and stage analysis. In the middle of the first paragraph, a stock would trade sideways for a while, then move up rapidly. Eventually, the rate of upward momentum would slow and become more erratic as stock was under distribution and topping out. After a top came the decline, right? And sometimes after the decline, the stock returned to a basing stage before eventually making another run upward. So the succession of one stage to the next through all four could take several years. What I found through my study of the biggest price performers was eventually, virtually every super performance stock makes made its big gain while in stage two of the price cycle. So yeah, stage two is where we want to kind of understand the, the best here. Um, <laughs> I would actually like to uh, later, but I would actually like to understand stages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The book the book talks about it here. So the next section is stock price matur matur maturation and the four stages, right? And so on page 66 at the top, from a fundamental perspective, the cause almost, almost, almost always was linked to earnings. Uh, from last performance to upside surprises, right? And accelerating growth, eventually followed by decelerating growth and then disappointment. So on the fundamental side, he, he, you know, he said earnings are the most important, right? These underlying fundamental changes drive, drove big institution players into and out of stocks, phases that could readily be identified by huge volume spikes that occur during the, uh, both the advancing stage and the subsequent decline. 
So the, the, the four stages are um, stage one, neglect phase. So basically it's under consolidation. Stage two, advancing phase, which is accumulation. And stage three, topping phase, distribution. Stage four, declining phase, capitulation. So those are the four stages, which again, um, I'll just rephrase what you said. Fundamentals, look at the earnings. Um, and, and we're going to look, you know, we talked about this slightly last time with NVIDIA and you and Microsoft, those big cap guys, maybe they are going to surprise um, going forward, right? That's why the market is expecting. Um, and then huge volume spikes. Make sure you look for those when they turn into stage two. They, they should be there. Um, that's that's the, you know, signify institutions are jumping into those stocks, right? So now he's going to break it down in different stages. So stage one, um, in the highlighted section, you should avoid buying during stage one, no matter how tempting it may be, even if the comp company's fundamentals look appealing. Wait and buy only in stage two. Um, and then in stage one characteristics, it says the price will move in a sideways fashion with a lack of any sustained price movement up and down. The stock price will oscillate around to 200 day moving average. It lacks any real trend downward or upward. And this could last for months or even years. This basing stage takes place after the stock price has declined during stage four for several months or more, right? So, so a lot of stocks went through that last year, 2002. And some of them are still in it. And some obviously are coming out of that stage four right now. Uh, on the next page, volume will generally contract and be relatively light compared to the stage four decline. So that's interesting too. So the volume should start to like dissipate, right? So um, so that's something you can look for. But again, he's, you know, um, I think he, he. I think the key here is like don't don't try to jump in on stage one. That's very important. Um, and then we'll talk about stage two in a second. But um, so I'm just highlighting this in my book for a second here. All right. So no bottom pricing required. And then in the highlight session, my goal is not to buy at the lowest cheapest price, but at the right price. Just as the stock is ready to move significantly higher. Trying to pick a bottom is unnecessary and a waste of time. It misses the whole point. To achieve super performance, you need to maximize the effects of compounding. Thus, it's important to concentrate on stocks that move quickly after you buy them. You want to focus on stocks that are already moving in the direction of your trade. To accomplish this, you should wait for stage 2 uptrend to develop before you invest. And then he's the next section transition from stage one to stage two. So I think this part is you know getting more interesting now. Um, so a stage two advance may begin with little or no warning. There are no major announcements or news. One thing is certain: a stage two will show significant volume as the stock is in strong demand on big up days and weeks. Volume will be relatively light during pullbacks. The, there should obviously be a previous rally of at least 25 to 30 percent from the 52 week low before you conclude that a stage two advance is underway and consider buying in the following figure note the 200 day moving average has turned up right so the black line i believe it's turned up it's in a definite uptrend so it's starting to turn upward the 150 day is above the 200 day i don't use 150 day but he does um so this is just just a slightly shorter moon average the 150 day is above the 200 day and the stock is trading above the 150 and 200 day right so obviously the price is above that and there's surging volume on the rallies again lighter volume on pullbacks and then on the next page, uh, in the bottom of the paragraph, most amateurs would think the stock is too high and wish they had bought it when it was lower. Using hindsight as a guide, that's why most amateurs don't make big monies in stocks. 
So the transition criteria, uh, again, is both above the 150 day and 200 day moving average. The 150 day is also above the 200 day. 200 days moving average turning up, and then you have a series of highs and higher lows. So that's also very, very super important. And then you have next page. You have large up weeks with volume spikes and low volume pullbacks. So there are more weeks on up volume than down weeks on lower volume. So in that chart above, MGen, he showed how you know as it start the stage two, you can see all those arrows pointing to the volume on the weeks that are up, right, and super high there. So that's how you know, like, you know, stage two has started and, you know, and then looking at the moving average, they also, also turn. Any question on stage one transition to stage two? Mm -hmm. No, it's big. Okay, cool. Um, so the, then, then the phase start to happen, stage two, and that's accumulation phase. Again, although it may come without warning, uh, it can be ignited by surprise news, such as, uh, a regulatory change, a promising business outlook, a new CEO, uh, or perhaps uh, it has a big earning surprise. Okay, um, and that's that's that that was um, the one stock that really stand out this week was uh, o o o n o n. I don't know if you follow that stock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hu like you know, it was huge volume. Like we'll look at the volume after. Um, but that was that was one example of it. Um. So then the next paragraph, we will build up in earnings momentum. So, you know, assuming there's earnings momentum now, uh, or at least expectations, he also mentioned. So meaning, you know, kind of like Nvidia, right? Like, you know, you don't see the numbers showing up yet, but the expectations are there, right? And the stock price starts to escalate because of a surge demand of demand by institutions buying the stock in size. A daily and weekly price and volume chart will show up big bars Abnorm with abnormally large volumes on rallies and then low volume on price pullbacks. These signs of accumulation should appear during every stage two event. Okay, so by this time, the the stock has been moving upward in the stair step pattern of higher highs and higher lows. The share price may have doubled or even tripled at this point. However, this may be the only beginning. The stock can still move substantially higher. If the compu company continues to deliver strong earnings, the growth rate will soon attract widespread attention and subsequent buying, especially if the company has reported several quarters of impressive earning gains. So in stage two, um, again, I think this is very similar to the transition one. It's above 200 day. Um, the 200 days in an uptrend, the 150 days above 200 day. Stock price is have higher highs and higher lows. Short-term moving averages are lo above long-term. So for, for example, 50 days above the 150 day. Volume spikes on big up days and big up weeks. And also uh, low, low uh, volume on price pullbacks. Um, more up days and more up weeks. And also on above average volume. And also the down days and down weeks are above average volume. So those are the key characteristics when how to detect a stage two? Any question on stage two? No. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stage three, uh, distribution phase. As the saying goes, all good things come to an end eventually. Uh, stocks cannot keep up the momentum indefinitely, churning out ever increasing percentage of earnings growth. At some point, earnings are still increasing, but they're rising by a smaller percentage. The stock price may be also hedging higher, although it may experience more high volume pullbacks, increasing volatility. The stock is no longer under extreme accumulation. Instead, it is changing hands from strong buyers to weaker ones. Smart money that bought early when the stock emerged onto the scene is now taking profits, selling into the final signs of press price strength. As that occurs, buyers on the other side of the transaction are weaker players who know about the stock because it had made such a dramatic run and capture headlines. In other words, the long trade in the stock has become crowded, too obvious. Volatility increases and the stock becomes more erratic. 
So that's those are the little things that he mentioned. Next page. At some point, the EPS momentum will start to slow. Either stock price will anticipate the change tra trading lower than it did before the actual earnings ev event, or there will be several quarters of slower earnings growth, deceleration, and then breakdown in the stock price. So against the characteristics of stage three, volatility increases, and you have wider, looser swings. Um, <laughs> The stock, the price, yeah, what, the stock price movement is more erratic. There's usually a major price break in the stock on an increase in volume. And you might even see the largest one day decline um, since the beginning of stage two events. Okay. Um, next page. It might also have the largest weekly decline since the beginning. Uh, these price breaks almost occur on overwhelming volume. Okay. Uh, and then it may undercut the 200 day moving average. Um, and it also may bounce below and above this moving average many times before topping out. The 200 day moving average is starting to lose upside momentum. It start to flatten out and then roll over. So that's stage three. So again, um, those are key characteristics. So basically, you see huge swings and you know prices going down like one day or one week kind of biggest decline and huge volume and the 200 day is starting to go down. Okay, so that's stage three. Any questions on stage three? <laughs> no, sounds good. Stage four, uh, capitulation, the declining phase. In the second paragraph, during stage four, Earnings model are generally revised downward, which put more selling pressure on the stock. The stage four selling may continue for an extended period until it's finally exhausted. The stock enters another period of neglect, which is stage one. It may take a while for a company to get back on the growth track and return to strong earnings. Uh, and it may even remain in stage one for many years. In some cases, the company may go bankrupt. Stage four mm -hmm. is essentially the opposite of stage two in terms of price and volume characteristics with high volume on down days and lower volume on up days. So you should definitely avoid buying in stage four. So the characteristics of stage four, um, if you look at the chart M gen down there, you can see, right? The first thing, uh, the line he drew there, the 200 days declining. So that's the first thing. The first, the price action is below the 200 day. The 200 day is in a definite downtrend in, in most cases, right? It, or it might be flattening. And it also, um, starting to hit new 52 week, new 52 week lows. Um, it has lower lows and higher highs as it go down. Um, and you have the short term moving average below the long term moving average. Uh, volume is spiking on down days and also on down weeks, right? Um, there's no, there's less volume on the rallies. They're, again, same thing on the uh, volume side. There are more down days and weeks on above average volume. And also uh, up, less up days than, than on above average volume. So that's the, the stage four characteristic as it goes down. Okay. So any question on stage four? No. <laughs> okay, so um, we now the price maturation maturation cycle. So I think this section is pretty important. Um, in the chart there, you can see is uh, there's is you draw out M gen, and 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 he shows you know S one to S four, and then S one to again continue the new cycle. So so here it's important to understand the study of the four stages of a stock's life cycle is not meant to pinpoint timing purpose which require a more precise approach and tactics that I will discuss. So that's, so in the next section, we'll talk about that. Rather, the four stages are more useful for gaining perspective on when or where a stock is in its life cycle price-wise and then compare that with the company in its earning cycle, right? So again, he, he's using this with the earning cycle. A stock can go through this cycle many times. By starting the four stages, you, you want to be in one stage to I'm not interested in getting early in stage one. 
And I definitely mm-hmm. don't want to hang around in stage three and let alone stage four. So again, he talks. He gives examples mm-hmm. here. So the first example, Mgen, um, long during stage to avoid other stages, right? And and it can repeat that cycle again. That's what Mgen did. Uh, F five networks it um, transition. So it has stage two, and then it transitioned from stage three to stage four. All right, you can see on the diagram there, and then decline in stage four, decline like I guess fifty percent. Uh, after it tops in eight months, uh, Weight Watchers again, same thing here. It top and then build a stage three top and transition to stage four. Next page, Noel. Uh, again, here it, it stage two went up and then stage three and then stage four going down. And then in stage four, there was a bear trap rally. This example here, where it just uh, and then in the picture below, it, it got expanded into a um. um more shorter time frame where the bear trap happens and it he said that it didn't transition into stage two because it fell and there was lots of selling in the stage two that's how you know it it wasn't successful so um so the next section how to pinpoint stage two um he said that history shows that virtually every super performance stock is in a definite uptrend before experiencing its advances um, in fact, 99% of all super performance stocks trade above the 200-day moving average before the huge events. 96% trade above the 50-day moving average, right? So basically, you know, don't look at stocks that are below 200-day in general. That's what you're trying to say there. Um, like at least not mm-hmm. not until they go back up above it. Um, and then he has this trend template here, which is very similar to all the stages that we kind of talked about. Um, and again, the high, the whole idea is that the stock must be in a long term uptrend. Um, so, so again, I'll read it out here the trend template. It has to be above 550 day and 200 day. 150 days should be above 200 day. 200 day is trending up for at least a month, preferably four to five months. So, that's interesting, right? So, it's not just 200 day like starting to move up, but it should be like has some time already. But you know, that's something important mm-hmm. to uh because just in case it, it can fail again um 50 days which is the short term should be above the longer term moving averages um the stock should also be above the 50 day um the stock price is at least 30 percent from its 52 week low so meaning it's not you know in general that's like not in stage one that's really what it's trying to say um the current mm-hmm. stock price is within so this one is interesting. It's within 25% of the 52-week high. So meaning like the closer to a new high, the better, right? That's what he's saying there. And the relative strength should be at least 70 or 80 or 90 even, right? Uh, that's based on the IBD um, uh, indicator. So those are his trend template um, in terms of how to define whether a stock is in stage two. Um, any questions on that? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. That's really good. Yeah. So, just a couple more sections we'll go through here. Uh, within and all. So, next section: riding the tide, tide, and timing the waves. I don't really understand that <laughs> that meaning, but anyhow, we, within an overall long long term uptrend, which he calls the tide, there will be short or intermediate term price action, which is the waves. The cons that consists of pullbacks and basing. Um. And these shorter term moves may last from four to five weeks to or even a year. And, but most of them usually a stage two uptrend lasts anywhere from five to 26 weeks in terms of the basis, right? So the basis can be like, you know, from five weeks or more to 26 weeks up. Uh, during this basing period, stocks will go sideways and if catching a breath in making the next push higher. The sideways price is not to be confused with a stage one phase. This stock is now in stage two, still stepping higher from base to base. This will continue all along to stage two events. So if you look at a uh, jump ahead to the next page, the graph, the M gen, you see he draw out stage one and then he draw the basis in stage two, mm-hmm. right? So, so from stage one to stage two, and when the stage two start, he start counting the basis, which are again, what he described as shorter form, shorter basis, right? 
So base 1, base 2, base 3, base 4, base 5. So basically it went up all the way to base 5 before stage 3 started, right? So, so basically the next session talks about this. Where are we on this mountain? So if you're in stage 2 now, you start counting the base. And he's using the analogy of the mountain. So uh, from flatland to the summit and back to the flatland again. As the mountain rises up to the left side on stage 2, these are areas where the path or accent plateaus for a bit. This is where mountain climbers would build a base camp, rest, and recharge, getting ready for the next phase of the climb to the summit. That's exactly what happened with a stop. After a run upward, there's profit taking, causing a temporary pullback during which the stocks built a base. And if the stock is truly in the middle of something significant, the longer term will re resume. The short term pauses allow the stock to digest its previous run up so that it can move even higher as it emerges from a constructive consolidation period. At some point, the upward momentum ceases, the stock tires, and the top is put in. This is like reaching the summit and there's no more mountain left to climb. Now comes the, the des descent. Generally, this occurs after three to five bases. So that's the key right there, three to five bases um, mm -hmm. bef in the stage two uptrend. Um, the later stage base coincides with the point at which stocks accumulation phase has become too obvious. So now after you know many bases and it's already climbed so much, now it's starting to become obvious. And then it tapped the, basically the last of, of the in heavy institution demand. Okay, so... Uh, basis 1 and 2 generally come off a market correction, which is the best time for jumping in. Um, base 3 is a little bit more obvious. 4th uh, and 5th base occurs. It's, it's extremely, the, the, the trend is extremely obvious and it's definitely in late stages. So that's when you start to really pay attention that whether it's near the top or not. Um, <laughs> Also, he said, you know, by this point, you will see that base values occur more frequently. Um, stocks can also turn up in a parabolic fashion or end in a climax run, a blow off top. So this one was shown in the striker example on the, on the illustration there, where it just have a climax run, 65% in 11 weeks. So it just runs really fast in a short time period. Uh, by itself, base, co base counting will not tell you if the stock has stopped, top, or even moving going to move substantially higher. It does, however, provide a way to gain perspective, right, on where you are within stage two advance. Combined with specific price volume analysis and fundamental analysis, it is a very powerful tool. Base counting was introduced by Bill O'Neill and David Ryan many years ago. It was a valuable way to ascertain whether a stock is in its price maturation cycle. So, um, okay, we'll finish one more section here. Trust but verify. Oh no, I haven't done that section yet. Okay, so that's pretty much it for today. Um, I think it's very relevant to where we're at, uh, especially if you're looking at leaders right now, trying to understand, okay, number one, uh, are they in stage two uptrend? You know, that will also tell you a little bit whether do we have enough, you know, do we have enough leaders, you know, for this bull market? Because that's what we also want to see, uh, because that will, you know, propel the stocks even higher when there's a bull market. Because people will, will not worry about, you know, we will just start to buy more and more stocks. Um, uh, I feel the market right now, like at least, I don't know, I, I don't like to listen to media and make any decision. But, I, but what I'm hearing is a lot of people are in position in the market right now. Most, even the traders on IBD, I feel like most of them are not positioned very well. So this reminds me of a little bit of January when we start the year and people were not positioned properly. Um, everyone just too fearful. Um, so that's one thing I, I, I feel. Um, and you know, we hit extreme fear not that long ago. Um, can you see my screen? I just wanna double check. No, it's uh... Yeah, it was showing Amazon now. Uh, Is it? Uh, I'm on Google right now. Yeah, Google. Yeah. Okay. Um. So let me just bring up the fear indicator. It's it's much higher now compared to a week ago, but 
you know, we we in fear. So there's still lots of fear, just not extreme fear, right? Um, so if we look at the timeline here, you know, we were in extreme fear when obviously the bank stuff started to happen. I don't remember exactly the date, but I think it has been at least, you know, um, I, I think it was the 9 or 10, that's when the SVB thing. Yeah, yeah, somewhere around that, yes. So it's been, yeah, Nine. it's been two and a half weeks, not even. It's been such a short time frame, right? Um... So it hasn't like been that long. That's the that's the scary part. So there's still lots of fear. We we are coming off extreme fear, but still lots of fear. And so we'll see uh, whether this is the end of it or whether you know we're gonna see more bank failures. I don't like really. I don't think anyone really knows. Of course, the Fed you know come out Wednesday with the quarter point hike and say oh everything is fine with the bank. And then you were texting me how yelling were flip flopping about, you know, helping mm -hmm. with uh, securing the depositors and stuff like that. So for more banks. Um, so again, lots of unknowns right now. Um, and then in Europe, uh, Lagarde, the EU president, basically reassured that everyone they're gonna, you know, make sure there's no issue and stuff. So I don't know. I I have a few, like I say I feel like um, they learned a lot from OA. You know what I mean? I feel like they, again, I don't want to, you know, assume too much here, but just common sense, right? In 08, the reason why it felt so bad, bad was, you know, they, they really didn't think it was a big deal or, you know, they didn't want it that close when things start to happen, like Burston start to go down and then three months later, Lehman go down. So, but will that happen again? I don't know. It could, but I feel like this time, maybe they're going to, you know, be more, pay more, a lot more attention, right? Uh, and making sure every mm -hmm. firm, you know, have their reserves and, uh, and, and I think there was an article on CNBC about, you know, over, over 100 billion has already been pulled out of banks and stuff like that since this debacle, um, from other banks, right? So it's, it's, it's a lot of people definitely afraid. Uh, I even hear traders on IBD, like some of them, like one of them pull out all his money from the broker <laughs> because he's so afraid that it's going to go bankrupt. Um, Mm -hmm. And that was Charles Schwab. Just so you know, Charles Schwab is a big broker, over a trillion asset, right? Yeah. Um, but this dropped a lot, right, during that time frame. And I think it has bounced back somewhat, but um, but it's still, you know, like look at this, right? It's scary, right? So people who are mm -hmm. trading, you know, on that platform, they worry that hey, what if they go down, right? So so in, and if you're in cash, you know, that's the scary part, right? Because you know, the cash is you might not get those cash back over a certain amount, so. Uh, you know, because the government only secures so much, so so that's the scary part, right? So people are really fearful. They're not positioned in the market, uh, you know, very well. And um, you know, like like when you look at Charles, it's actually look okay to me, like because it didn't make a new low, uh, this week. Uh, well, it did make a low on Friday, uh, on the last week, but. It hasn't beat this low here, but if we look at like, like regional bank KRE, it made a new low on Friday, like yesterday. So that was uh that was interesting, and then it rebound as after that, and it closed at the top, right? So the banks rebound yesterday, uh, the smaller banks, uh, very interesting, uh, cause I thought it was gonna collapse again after it hit that new low, but it didn't. Instead, it bounced back, um. And then all the major index turned green, right? Like by the end of the day, which is also very interesting. So it definitely like, so the question is, is it exhausted yet? Like the selling, you know, are the people who want to sell already sell? Um, and then probably the bigger question is, are there going to be more bank problems, right? So I don't know. I feel like that's, those are really, no one really knows. Um, that's why there's so much fear right now and people are not positioning properly. Even as a growth investor, I feel, um, and again, also depends on the area you're looking at, right? So banks are definitely very challenging. I think most of them hit new lows. I think on Friday, um, like you know, if we look go look at FRC, which is the, the the biggest one they're looking at now. Yeah, see, it's just it's trading really tight though. That's very interesting. Uh, you know, it used to be jumping like twenty, thirty percent a day. Now it's like moving a lot less. Um, so. So that's uh very in interesting too. So yeah, see it's, it's like moving 
let's see on Friday well it didn't even move it closed exactly the same where it's on Thursday on Thursday it was down six percent Wednesday okay so Wednesday was down 15 percent I guess the chart is so uh, it has dropped so much that it doesn't appear to be that big <laughs> at the bottom here so maybe that's why okay so yeah um, so it did hit like yeah pretty much new low on Friday um, and it didn't close much higher too that's so so really really sad um, so people are still really fearful of this one for sure for sure um, so you know this is a little bit about banks um, any question about this this area Uh, so basically, if you saw uh, what Fed has done with that BTFP program, so we it looks like their balance sheet again went up like three ninety billion in last two weeks. Yeah. So I'm not sure if this is again QE or not. Yeah, in a way it is right. Because um, mm -hmm. now those money are put. I I think it's you. I don't know like. Like is that whole the whole amount put into that program? Um, so, yeah. So what they are doing is basically say you have ten year uh, bond that you purchased last year, right? Mm -hmm. Bond price is gone down. So what they are saying is you give us those kind of investment and we will you will basically you will be able to borrow on that. Mm. They they are putting those bonds as collateral because anyhow after ten years you will get the value on like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. But yeah, they are in. They they need a liquidity right now, so they are injecting liquidity that way. Right, injecting right. That. Yeah, so I think I think from that sense, it's, it's really good, right? Um. You know, that's why I'm. I don't really understand. Like, um, if that's the case, then, and if there's, no, I don't know if there's a limit to borrowing, then like. Why would a company like FRC go down, right? Like it doesn't make any sense unless there's a limit to the boring, right? Um, so, like, and and unless they 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 have less cash than like I mean they have less asset than the depositors, otherwise they shouldn't. Yes. Like, even if they run the bank, you know, if they can borrow against that that like like you said those those mortgage that that they had, like they can't, they, like. They should be able to withstand that, right? Because the Fed is injecting liquidity. So I don't really understand. Like to me, it's really scary because this stock has not moved at all. Like there's n normally you see some sort of rebound. There like there's no rebound whatsoever, even after that. Uh, other than the, it, yeah, uh, like the only rebound you saw was like um when it dropped three day really fast in a row, and that was that day that one bounce. Um, there's a small bounce here. I don't remember what happened that day, but after since it's been like many sessions now, like at least eight sessions that I can see. So starting from seventeen to now, right? So yeah, it's like six sessions. It hasn't moved a dime, right? Um, that's I think that's the scary part. I don't know why though. That's weird, right? Like you know, especially as time progresses, you think you think like it would. It would be uh people want to jump back into this stock and it hasn't so i don't know like it could still go bankrupt it's possible i don't know like i don't really understand enough to to you know like are are they um like so the one thing that i know like everyone knows is that people are moving money out of frc right so or any other regional banks not just frc and so if they have much smaller book of business then Obviously, they're not going to make as much money anymore, and so their revenue is going to go down big time, right? And so, is that going to bankrupt the company? It's possible, you know what I'm saying? So now it's more yeah. like now it comes down to operations, and they were like I said, they were used to making profit. Um, maybe now they're not going to make a profit anymore and start to lose money, and so. That that would be also bad because that will also tie up their liquidity, and so that is operations. That had nothing to do with the the mortgage investment that that they had. So so that would be you know disastrous, right, for the company. So so I don't know. Like, are they eventually going to go bankrupt? It's possible because 
they're just not making that much money no more and so that's maybe maybe that's what's happening i don't know so it's more of an operational problem now as they lose their business right to the big man and that's the scary part and that's the part that you know uh if you own this stock it could be wiped out because if they go bankrupt basically yeah yeah that's a perception problem too <laughs> the yeah are moving yeah because the, the challenge here is these are smaller banks and the Fed's not going to bail them out unless a lot of them are going to fail at the same time, you know? Um, you know, because they're not too big to fail, right? Um, like Deutsche Bank, they have 1.3 trillion assets and that is too big to fail. Like, you know, Europe not going to let that fail. It will just be a chaos if that happens. So that one, no matter what, they'll they'll bail them out, right? In in some way or in another way, like you know. Um. So, um. So like the Fed already, like you say, injecting so much money. Um, I think it will definitely stop the bleeding. It's just like I said, the the problem is more about operations now. Like going into the next few months, they're gonna lose a lot of customers because people are scared. They don't want to deal with the hustle of like you know. Uh, even the Fed guaranteed their deposit, they just don't want to deal with the hustle of you know all this stuff, right? So people just wanting to move their money to the bigger bank. So I don't know. I feel like some of them will, will go bankrupt. Um, they they're just not going to survive as an operation no more. Um, that's the sad part. It might take months though for that to happen. So 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 that's the thing. I think like again, I I feel just like the Fed say, right? They they, they have confidence in the system. Um, and again, I feel like they're watching it very closely now, more than ever. Um, because number one, it happened so fast this time, right? What's this 08? Um, and it could be because, like people say, it's because of social media and stuff like that. People, like, you know, they, they, they get their attention so quick, right? And, uh, and then, yeah, all this stuff. So it happens really fast nowadays. Um, it's, that's the scary thing. So that's why... If something really bad happens, it will be pretty fast. And and so for me, I feel like if time progress and it didn't happen, the more time progress and it didn't happen, to me it's like there probably isn't a problem anymore just because I'm expecting to happen so fast, but it didn't, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know. Like, like I say, I don't know. Like If some of these companies are covering, you know, I'm not saying fraud, but like just not being paid attention to and bad management stuff like that yeah they could have mm -hmm. problems um so yeah like it's, too, it's, it's crazy how it's only two and a half weeks not even and um it feels like you know like I, I also hear this all the time people are really afraid of their bank accounts and stuff um you know um especially if you have more money than the insured amount um so that's that's the scary part um yeah yeah like one of the traders in ibd he actually pulled out all his money because it was in cash and he wasn't buying much because of this market wasn't good so he's like why 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 leave it in there and rent have the risks of losing it if the company go bankrupt you know so so he moved the money into another another account um so definitely uh they also talk about uh you know it's definitely like if you have lots of money, you definitely want to divert, maybe diversify a little bit. Of course, I I, I don't like managing different accounts, right? Especially different platforms. Um, that's that's you know, um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think also like you know buying, like even if you're not doing anything with the cash, you should buy. That's why people buying bonds, uh, or, or money market or something on the paper so that. <laughs> So that the bank can take that away from you, which is funny. Like they can take away your cash, but they can't take away any securities, uh, because of the securities law. So those that's really funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we can look at uh, the the yield for a second. It has yeah. See, it has starting to drop really fast now, and it's clearly below the two hundred day, fifty day. Um. I think I think it's gonna drop really fast going forward. That's why 
there's lots of bear analysts out there, right, saying, oh, what's the next shoe to drop? You know, is it the commercial market? Is you know, what what what's the next big shoe to drop? Is it more tech com? Yeah. Commercial. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the is it the tech companies, the younger growth companies? They're gonna go fail fail now because they, you know, no one's gonna lend them money anymore, right? Stuff like that, right? Um, possible, right? Um, Jim Ropel, he said, and this is of course say he's an optimistic guy. He said, you know, don't listen to those nonsense. He said, right? He said that uh, in the U.S. anyway, um, if you are a true entrepreneur and you have a product that's so good. You will find the investments. Like there's gonna be rich people who will invest in your product or company. Um, th- th- you know, don't believe in the media about this stuff, right? Like, yeah, you know, they're not gonna get any more loans. The growth's gonna die. Innovation will die. No, I don't know if you saw the news with uh, character AI. They just raised um lots of money. Um, and so you know, those are examples that you know show confidence. In the future, right, of any technology, if it's a truly, especially AI, it's like the next big thing. Um, th- there's going to be lots of investors still willing to invest in those companies. So, so yeah, don't don't again. I I really feel like we're still in a like in a bull market because this is the kind of things that if you follow the media, you're gonna be scared shitless to buy any stock right now. You're gonna think that oh, there's no way growth stocks gonna grow with all these problems like banking problems and in SVB or like wh- who's gonna lend you money? Like if you listen to the media, you're gonna feel like you don't want to invest right now. Yeah. Like, and so you know, I see why Jim Ropel like talk about this stuff because you know y- you're gonna feel like hey, this is the end of the war. This is gonna like be a recession for and the fed just you know forecast recession for the rest of the year right they just came out with that which i didn't even know on that day because i wasn't listening to the whole thing but apparently that's what he did he forecast the next three quarters of negative gdp uh and analysts a lot of analysts were shocked with that i'm surprised the market well it did tank right after the uh conference um on wednesday and but still like that's pretty shocking like oh wow u.s gonna start entering recession next quarter and so all these news are not good, like in the media. Like if you follow those news and you just listen to it, you're gonna become depressed and you don't want to own any stock. And so, you know. But but here's the thing, right? Like despite all these things happened this this month so far, March, we we come into April pretty soon, like one more week. Um, but but what do you see? You see like the stocks, except for the banks, hasn't dropped that much, really. Like in fact, I think um, like we'll just jump to the index right now because that was something that I find very interesting. And we will look at the weekly picture. Nasdaq is up, right? It's up uh one point six percent, um, which is we knew that because that was the strongest index. S and P, look, it's two weeks of green now. It's up one point three nine percent this week, right? Two weeks, not one week, two weeks now. Like, it's like Dow Jones. Okay, this one is only up one week, you know, uh, but still, like it, it's up this week, like you know, one percent. It's not much, but it's up. Uh, Russell is probably the only one that's down. Let me see, maybe up actually. Well, it up slightly, not much. Right, again, it hit a new low, but it's still closed up for the week. So, it's not as like if you look at the index. Yes, it's bad. Lots of bad news, lots of fear. Um, definitely a lot of people are not positioned in this market right now, uh, I feel, um, and, but yet the index are up. So, of course, you know, many stocks are down though, right? Uh, and you, I can show you this, um, the, the, tr- the, the market trend I have followed here, and this is based on the tool McBoss Capital has, and this is the number of stocks being distributed this week this week right here there's still lots of red and then this is the stocks that are being accumulated so in three weeks look at the last three weeks it's still there's still way more distribution in stocks than accumulation right um and tuesday was the only day it was slightly it was higher than the, the accumulation and distribution and that was the day before the fed thing 
So, but almost every day, it's like overwhelmed by distribution. So, a lot of stocks are being distributed right now, and that's that's the that's the that's the story behind. Um, and so, um, so that's the scary part. There's no sector, you know, that is really. You can see here the first one is technology group. So technology did okay this week. Um, retail, no. Industrial, no. Health, uh, energy commodities, and financial or, or real estate. So there's you know really nothing has picked up that much yet, right? Uh, so it's, it's still a very bad market. And so with that being said. If we are going to turn to more upside momentum, we, we basically, we, you know, based on this, we are three weeks into huge distribution. But again, like I said, the index are not showing that as as bad as it is, which is weird. But the week, the first week was bad. Like this week right here, you can see Russell. That's the big. That's the first thing that happened on that week. The bank stuff. Go back to, to that week here. Okay, so here, so we make a low in the middle. Of the second week, um, Dow Jones. Okay, same thing. And S and P. Same thing. So, yeah, I'm still very surprised that it bounced this week. Um, with all that fear. Um, yeah. Any questions on this? <laughs> no. <laughs> so basically, uh. Though so much negative news, right? But still, indexes have not made new low. Yeah. Yeah. Even Friday with the Deutsche Bank news, I thought it was gonna crash. Like people were gonna sell, but you know, um, but maybe because Europe index was down almost two percent, and I said, oh man. It's gonna be a big, really red day today on Friday, right? I said, "Oh man, if Europe's down to almost two percent, we might be down at least one or two percent, right?" It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. it, it was pretty negative in the morning, but it slowly bounced as the day progressed, right? Yeah, and we closed positive actually. Yeah, so but you see, it slowly bounced since the first fifteen minutes right here. We make the bottom in the first like hour, and then mm -hmm. it bounced like. Like that—that that was the surprising thing. It wasn't a big bounce or anything, but it's just the fact that it can even hold uh, with all this bad news. It's really surprising to me. Um, you know, like I would, I was like, especially you can see, like, like I don't usually do this, but David Ryan, he he loves to like draw a short term trend on on daily chart um, <laughs> to see where the momentum is in the next day or two. Like right now, you can see it clearly broke this downtrend. Uh, and now it's on the uptrend. So we will expect Friday, Monday to continue. If this is the the trend it started. Usually it's one or at least two days, right? So so now we we broke this trend. Now it's gonna probably go up more on Monday. Again, I think everyone's like you know, um, I think like with all when you ever you have macro news, people are reluctant to hold over the weekend because they always fear something gonna bad happen and then. You're gonna have a big gap down on Monday, and it could happen, but you know. But like I said, as which week progress, and that doesn't happen, then things are gonna turn more and more positive, right? Like you know, um, at least for the meantime, right? Until something big happens again. Um, yeah, but we can't. Like that's the thing, right? Like I think as a trader, you almost can't trade based on emotions. When you do, you always end up being on the wrong wrong side. If you know what I mean. Um, yeah, like I think sometimes you like as a trader, you almost have to be counterintuitive because if you follow the general pe masses of people, what they do, then who's gonna win? Like you know, usually it's not the mass of people that wins. It's it's usually the 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 minorities that that tend to to uh, do better. So, um, so yeah. So that's that's where things are at. Um, uh, but today I I feel like you know we should focus more on the longer term trend. Um, 
you can see here oops you can see here like you know we are still like i mean okay we hit a low here we broke this trend and then now we have this trend so we'll see if this low holds here uh we are back above 200 day so that's really good news um 50 days is still trending up so it's not like super high but it's trending up uh, you know this was its previous so if, if we can continue this trend that would be really good right um oh so the other thing like um according to you know the election cycle and stuff um uh, pretty sure it was mark newton from fun strat he said uh we are entering the most bullish month of the whole election cycle which is april okay so so you know if if like i say if there's no more bad news coming out or at least there's no you know not much news coming out no news is good news right now um this could build momentum again right um so watch out for april it could be uh, one of the strongest months generally that's what happened uh and i i feel like a lot of stocks are set up right now um um you know even though like, there's lots of volatility but i feel like there's more stocks set up right now than ever before um um so that's why i feel like i feel quite bullish that way um and like i say I, I also want to focus more on you know kind of what we just studied from mark minimum in his book about the stage cycle where we at because i feel like you know again if we are in stage two right now if you have a stock that is in stage two and we are in a bull market i feel like this is the time to focus on the top elite stocks you know the top five right narrow down to the top five because that's where you're gonna make lots of money um and if you can hold and and, and hold your stage two and that's the key right to building wealth so uh, you know like the daily trading which i do do is much harder right now because of the volatility uh you know you easily get chopped up and i haven't done like, I, I do still do it but it's just not as much lately because uh like i say the volatility just keep kicking me out every time i buy something i get stopped out um so i'm more focused on the longer term picture um trying to narrow which are going to be the big leaders and yeah so before we jump into stock do you have any other questions So n none of the indexes are in danger zone right now, right? Yeah, the only one is Russell, right? Russell is the weakest one, and it's like below all the moon averages. Um, you can see here, and if we go to the, sh the daily, same thing, right? So it's, it's this this like I said, the banks are still a big risk. It's still below this ten day is still going down strong, right? Um. I, I don't know what's going to happen to the banks, honestly. But it hasn't affected the other index as much, you know? Um, because at the end of the day, like, like I know what's going to happen, which is, like, even if the sum of the smaller banks going to fail, what's going to happen? What's the big deal? Well, some some of those equity holders going to lose their money, bondholders going to lose their money uh, for those banks. But, but the, the operation, like, the consumer would just basically move their money to the bigger bank right so it doesn't impact the economy as much as it you think it would right um so going like if that's the case then yeah i think the bull market can continue as long as the big banks don't have problems because that's a much bigger problem right so you you have you have like you, you know i don't know there's lots of regional banks but let's say you i don't know what's the number let's say you have a thousand now it's shrinked to 800 well you still have lots of regional banks just not as much and then and then the big banks take more more customers on you know right now it's that's the thing right even with tech like you know same thing like it seems like everyone's like jumping into the big techs again because they have cash flow at least the ones that have cash flow um you know and and so people are putting the money there and you know and and they're all doing well you know um you know look at microsoft holding so tight near the highs right here look at that this is like pure accumulation like look at this volume as it goes up like that's that's crazy look at this accumulation right here right so this these guys are being accumulated because they don't need bank money they don't need bailout even google i'm surprised how fast it came back up like almost you know coming back to the recent high so fast 
you know. Right. Um, yeah, like Nvidia is no by no by far the the strongest big cap right now, right? You know, it's just riding the ten day, pull back to the twenty one day. Here's another one. You see, this is like super strong stock for a big cap. Like money is just piling into this guy. Like you can tell, all the, look at all these blue bars right here. Look at all these blue bars right here. Like it's just constant accumulation. Like all the blue bars are sticking out. Um, you know, um, even like even Apple, I think, like doing okay. Like see, it already passed the previous recent high. See my black line, I even drew it here. It's like a lot, like you know, this one doesn't have as much volume bars, but still, like it's moving to new high prices. Um, I think Amazon, even Amazon, I think, starting to move back up. Like not as strong. That's probably the weakest one, I think. But you know, this is probably the weakest one. Um, like even uh, what was the other one? Netflix. Netflix. I I was shocked. They jumped like a lot right this week. Um, because I think they report good, possible good numbers for Canada after the password sharing. They, they have more accounts now. Um, so look at this volume on Thursday and Friday, like huge. You know, yeah. Before that, it was kind of on the downtrend, but after that news came out, like look, like people are piling into this. You know, the bigger guys. Um, you know, look at AMD. Same thing. Even AMD, right? Look at it. It's like so strong right now. Holy. It's like, look at that uptrend trajectory, really strong. Like, like everyone's piling into the big caps. Um, to me, this is a sign of a bull market. Like, not, not the whole market is bullish yet, but it could mm -hmm. become right. Like, as soon as like people stop stop feeling, and because they're not positioned, and then again, if people are shorting and stuff, like it will keep pushing the market higher as people cover and as people will start positioning, right? So. Again, it reminds me exactly of January. What happened? People, you know, December was so bearish. Everyone just so fearful of what could happen, and then going to January, all of a sudden, like it start to move up, and as it moves out, it doesn't stop. And and I feel like this might happen again. Um, anyhow, that's just my sense of bullishness from that perspective. Um, but more importantly, you have to look at stocks, right? Individual stocks, and see if they're setting up and stuff. Um. Uh, Tesla, like I like even Tesla, I like I'm really surprised. Like look, it, again, it's not moving up strong. Like it's kind of reminds yeah. me of Amazon a little bit. Uh, Netflix, those are you know not as strong. So Amazon, Netflix, uh, and Tesla are the weakest right now on on all the big caps. But but it's moving up. It's just not as strong, right? Um, like yeah, by far, like Nvidia is like the leader. I can tell. From the way it moves, and the and we saw all the volume bars, right? So these big caps, no, none of them is doing bad right now. They're all doing like moving in the upward, upward uh, momentum. Um, the question, so so so, there is there is lots of bears out there, even from a technical <coughs> perspective, because there's not enough breath. That was one thing that was keep. Even Jim Ropel mentioned that there's not enough breath. In terms of a bull market, we need like right now. Yes, I highlight some of the few big cap techs that are leading the market, but in general, we're not seeing many. You know, um, again, same thing, right? Even on the accumulation side, we're just not seeing accumulation at all. Like there's way more stocks going down than up, and that is the breath that is not there. And mark bull market cannot start without breath. Um, so the question, and this is the big question, right? Like even on IBD Live, they talk about this. Is, are those big cap tax and maybe some growth stocks going to, you know, give hope to the market uh, and eventually bring more stocks back up? Or is it going to be the other way around, which is, you know, the banks and the worst stocks in the group, all that stuff, just going to get worse and slowly drag everything down, Right. That's a question unknown right now, and most most analysts, as even on the technical side, are more leaning towards the bearish scenario, and it could happen, you know. But like I say I don't want to jump to those conclusions. For me, uh, I want to trade based on what I see setting up right now. Um, you know, like my portfolio hit a new high this week. Like it, it went back down, but it did hit a new high. And I was really happy about that. And uh, again, there's no reason for me to sell right now. Um, 
because it's hitting new highs this week, like despite all this news. So until it, it going the other way, which is not working, like I'm not hitting new highs and stuff like that, then yeah, then I, I need to really consider. Uh, but that, you know, the, the, I did this sell on Friday, like I said, every time it moves out, I have to sell, right? Um, because I have, this is not the best environment still. Um, so anyhow, so that's, that's that. Um, any, anything else before, like, let me, let me just like look at the sector for a second. Like that's one thing I haven't looked at in a while. Um, I just want to see if there's anything different there. So we have this, we can go to all the sectors here. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna change this date or something. Okay. So year to date and technology sector seventeen percent. Commercial communication service, eighteen percent. So those are the two dominant. You see, so tech is still mm -hmm. leading, like at the top here. So those are good sign. And I just want to check the second group, uh, nine percent consumer discretionary. And wow, lots of negatives. Look at this, a lot of negatives. Yeah, that's it. Like that. That's the only other positive group is the consumer discretionary. Wow, so that's XLY. Um, well, yeah, so those there was one more I remember that was doing well before. Um, yeah, no. So so you see, real estate is minus three. Financial is the biggest one, minus nine. Oh no, energy is also wow. Energy is actually the biggest, minus ten. Healthcare down minus six. Utilities minus six, consumer staples minus two, materials minus one. So all these are negatives, right? Uh, industrial, oh, yeah, I think it was material and industrial that was positive before. Now it's negative. Oh yeah, and retail also negative now. So, so yeah, so everything has kind of not gone. You know, this 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 three are still holding at the top. It's still kind of in the uptrend. It's not in the downtrend right now. Um. IVW is growth. So IVW, you can see the growth is actually doing better, right? So value stocks are not doing that well right now, despite what everyone is saying. Lots of people are bullish on value, but it hasn't shown it, which is funny. Um, and it could be because there's a financial component to it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so those three are outliers. Um, tech is still the leader. Definitely, yeah. There you go. Mm. All right. So, so um, is there anything else you want before we jump to the stock? I don't know if there's any news coming out this week. Um, yeah, let's check that. Yeah, let's check the calendar here. So I also want to check that I haven't checked this GDP number. Let me see. What's the recent estimate here? So we know quarter one is, is huge growth. Wow, look at that. 3%. Look at this GDP estimate for Q1. It continued to go up. That's crazy. Like, you know, this is, here's, here's the thing. The Fed, right, is, is projecting negative GDP going this coming into the second quarter. And yet, and, and one of the analysts on, on, on CNBC was talking about it. He's like, and yet, the current GDP is like over 3%, right? Like he didn't say over 3%, but it was, he said it's big. And yet he, they predict the next three quarters is going to go red. So it's a little bit unbelievable, you know? Um, hey, if it doesn't happen, it might be really good for the market. So, um, so that's one thing to think about. Um, so yeah, this week, uh, so near the end of the month, so that's always the home price index come out. U.S. consumer confidence on Tuesday. Um, there's one government to speak on Monday. Um, that's really late in the evening. Um, pending U.S. home sales. It seems like no one paying to attention to the home sales as much anymore. 
So the the home industry are still doing pretty good, I think. Um, what's the index that? Uh, that ITB, that ITB. Home construction. Yeah, see, it's holding pretty tight. This is the you know this is the uptrend here, pull back, holding pretty tight. Like this is pretty tight. Like I'm surprised how tight it's trading. Um, and you know it's holding on to all these gains, right? It's not climbing back. So this is this is you know definitely starting a, a definitely a base one here, right? So anyhow, uh, GTP. Okay, so GTP revision. No big deal. Usually people don't care. Uh, jobless claims. There are not much news going for it. Like oh, PC index. Yeah, Friday. So that's another core num inflation number. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, point six. This is uh last last time. This forecast. Oh, okay, this forecast is actually. I don't know. Dash dash mean nothing or zero. I don't know. Um, but the core. It's gonna drop from 0.6 to 0.4. So 0.4 is still high, but we'll see. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for that one. So, um, yeah, that's that one. And and well, well, yeah, that's it, right? Um, yeah. So we'll jump to look at like. So my two best performing stock. Uh, we'll go to Anet first, just because that one is so strong. Like you know, breaks out right here, pull back to the ten twenty one day, right the ten twenty one day twenty one day here, and then bounce ten ten day, and that was the last time it bounced right here. Like it hasn't touched the ten day since, and this week, it's holding so strong. Like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it just doesn't even want to come back to ten day. Look at even with Friday. Okay, it feels like a uh, deja vu again. Like look at Friday, we're close. It's like near the top, right? Um, this stock just does not want to go down, right? And you can see the daily accumulation right here. Look at the pullback Wednesday, Friday, low volume decreasing, right? All these are perfect, perfect technical trades. Um, okay, so I want to look at the weekly chart. So here you go, right? We have this base uh this long stage one right here it broke out so here we have this you know like i'm using the the template that that uh mark mini we need to describe right so we have this like 20 30 or even more from the bottom like percentage wise and then we build base one so so i marcus smith from ibd has this tool that it does tell you what base it is and so we we are now past pay, like we have base one and and so so this basically is stage two starting, right? This is like what Mark Ma Ma is saying. This is stage two starting. So this is like the cup, right? Base cup base one. Um, now in in IBD's case, they 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 count this as uh, you know, base one. But you know, uh, I don't know if Mark Ma in this case. I, I I don't know if you consider this base one. I I, I would assume so. Um, but yeah, so it break out. Now we're in stage two right here. Stage two, right? So, so when stage two, if you think of stage two, is the beginning, right? So it's good. So in the long term, um, you know, just like here, you can see base base one, base two, base three, right? So this this is like their stage two uptrend, right? And then look at this, like I do, I don't even know this stock, like I didn't pay attention to this stock before. Look at this one. This is like a climax run right here, like in one week. Look at that, right? So. Yeah. So he talked about that, right? So you know, you will have a climax run usually at the end, and that's where you usually want to take some, you know, really take some big profit. Um, but you know, we'll talk more th about this. I think for me, like riding stage two, like it's not that hard to understand once you identify this. But the problem, like for most people, I find the problem even for me is like just trying to hold through this this basis, right? That's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Like this is see, oh, look at this tight base right here. Even this one. So it tells you too on uh, Marcus Smith like twenty percent correction depth. That's what it says. Depth is twenty percent. Mm -hmm. This one depth is the depth is twenty eight percent. So so it, you know, like, like so twenty percent is not bad. 
This one is less, eleven percent only. Um, this one is twenty three percent. So obviously you you know you won't buy here because it's still in stage one. But now like you know I think we, we you know a few weeks ago we identified this like breaking out or it's getting ready to break out and it did, and now it has moved up twenty percent from this buy point. So that's where I'm at. You know, uh, twenty percent now gains. So, um. Yeah, so now it's just like I said, as it moves up in you know in stage two, eventually it'll pull back and it might even build a base, another base, and then it'll go, you know so it's base one. Let's say this is base one. It, they call it stage here, but it's you know it's what we really, really count as base, um, and base one, and then it'll form base two, or form base three as it moves up, and so you know. So then you have to decide how how you're gonna play through stage two uptrend, and then base one, base two, even base three is okay, and then when it gets to base four and five, it usually get so like this one only has up to base three, you see. All right, and then here is base four. It's a very short base, so minimum weeks of base is five weeks. So it did hit five weeks here. So it hit four bases before topping out. So this base basically fell. Went up, break out, and then it fell, right? So, in his book, he showed a lot of those examples. Any questions on this? Super fundamental. So, yeah, go ahead. So, you, uh, you see that uh, green bar, so where it's reached basically 20%, right? Yeah. But, uh, so, basically, you will be still holding. So, so this uh twenty percent bar thing, the, the IBD setup is they have a general rule of thumb, right? Is that you know you you should, let's say from the buy like this is the buy buy point right here, and then they set seven percent seven to eight percent stop loss, okay? So that's this red bar here. Sorry, let me start over because it's probably harder for you to see. Yeah, there you go. It's really light color, but it's like here seven to eight percent stop loss. And then here's the five percent, zero to five percent buy zone, and then here's the twenty to twenty-five percent profit uh, taking zone. So for most people, they said, right? Because most people aren't savvy investors; they're learning IBD stuff. In general, rule of thumb is you have seven eight percent loss rule, and you have twenty to twenty-five percent profit taking rule. And the reason they they tell most people to do that is because that number work out really well for you, right? So so the rule of thumb is three times three to one ratio, right? In their case, right? So seven percent, you lose seven percent, and if if you make like you ha you have to like if you make one time times twenty one percent, I'm just using the number so that it, it makes works out. So if you make twenty one percent, you have to lose three times seven percent to lose that twenty percent, twenty one percent. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a it's like just the law of math here, right? Like you know, it's a three to one ratio. So in four trades, you 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 have to lose three times and make one time twenty percent, and you will break even. All right. So so they encourage people to take twenty twenty five percent profit, at least at the beginning, and then if it start working more and better and better, and the market is like super bullish, yeah, you can hold on longer and take higher more profit. Right. But you know, even if you're self invested, they always encourage you to take some profit whether it's 25 percent of it 50 percent of it take something because it will uh it's kind of like following the mock mini mini rule right like you just have to always have um a, a good win versus loss ratio in terms of the percentage gain and losses does that make sense um for me for me right now my rule is very simple i generally take like um I'm more based on time frame for the long when I'm dealing with long term trading, like you know, not like you know, short term trading, like more longer term trading. I generally will take like twenty percent profit each week, right? So if like this week I took twenty percent, last week I took twenty percent, right? Now I don't know it's gonna jump five percent or how many percent this week, but that's just my rule of thumb, right? So so let's say I was at hundred percent position. Now I've taken two weeks in a row. Now I'm down to like close to sixty percent. You know what I'm saying? Position. Um, so I'm basing it on time, and 
again, you have to be careful when you're using this method because it has to be like in the uptrend, right? If it's not an uptrend, you, you might give up all your gains back. And but I do move my stop loss up. So every time I take profit, I do move my stop loss. Um, so I get I can easily get tripped, right? So I'm pretty sure I moved my stop loss up this week to uh, to the low of the previous week. Um, if it does come back down, hey, then we have a pullback. And if we do have a pullback and I get tripped, that's fine. And what will I do is I, I will watch it very closely. And because um, every stock will pull back eventually. And so that's why this is a personal preference. I don't really say, oh, what's the best method? It's up to you how you want to define your risk. So let's say it pulls back. And let's say I think this week, like this would be the stop point right here near 160. So we pull back to 160, which means it will pull back past the 10 day moving average and probably hit the 21 day as it comes up here. Somewhere around there. If it does pull back that hard and it will trip it, and depending how far it goes and maybe it rebound, that's when I'll buy it back, right? So I'm okay with tripping it because, you know, I, I, like, I have no problem with that. I'll buy it back, you know. Um, that's how I manage my risk, you know. Uh, but for some people who doesn't watch it closely, it's harder to do that, right? Because um, if you don't watch it closely, it could bounce really fast and all of a sudden you sell it, you know, down here, 160, and you buy it back at like, you know, pretty much higher, right? So, like, 171. So, like, you know, for me, like I said, I watch it pretty closely, so it's easier for me to do that. Um or you can just have a bigger um, risk tolerance, tolerance, right? Like you can have a bigger stop loss gap. You know, maybe you want to say, maybe uh, like this thing obeys the 21 day really well. Maybe you want to use that, right? Uh, or maybe you can use, you know, 10 day would be too close. Generally 10 day is too close. It usually trip the 10 day eventually. Um, you know, something like that. It could trip next week. Who knows? Um, you know, but it might not hit the 21 day, you know. So it's up. Everyone has their own personal way of setting their own stop loss, or it can be a, a, a you know, some people do trailing stop loss, like seven to eight percent every time. You know, it's always seven to eight percent behind the the high, right? You could do that too. Um, yeah, but for me, I don't sell all because we are in stage two uptrend. We just started. Like this stock is the top stock right now, as far as I'm concerned. Um, SMSCI, like, um, is pretty strong too. Um, you know, it did pull back. So let's go look at SMSCI. It did pull back on thing Thursday, Friday. So, um, but look at where it closed. Look at that. All right. So it bounced. Like it didn't even touch the ten day. I, I was like, oh, it's gonna touch the ten day. There's no like it's dropping, dropping, dropping. I couldn't believe it. Like within like an hour and a little bit. Like if you go look at the 15 minute chart, it bounced so much. Like yeah, oh, okay, maybe not. Maybe it stopped bouncing earlier in the day. I thought it would start. So in yeah, in the morning it was dropping like a rock, like really steep drop. And I'm like, oh, it's gonna trip the 10 day for sure. It didn't. Pretty close to it. Like it was down a lot, like it's six six percent in the morning. Uh, but you know, I know this was gonna happen. So SMSCI is a more volatile stock than a net and so you have to you have to like be able to deal with this pullbacks here and this might not be a one day thing but i don't know it's like the fact that it bounced back make, makes me feel like it's a one day thing uh, but you see how this one closed at the bottom uh you see how this closed at the bottom close at the bottom like close at the bottom like but this is different this close at the top so i, I you know i feel like this is a one day thing um um so coming back to the chart and it closed pretty near like if you look again right now it's very hard to trade daily i find because of the volatility i don't know if that's going to subside i don't think it will um if it does it's a good sign for the, the the broad market right um i don't know if it will though um but that being said so it's better to look at weekly chart because if you look at weekly chart, look at where it closed. It closed in the top, you know, it says your close range is 67%. So it's closed at the top one third range. So that's pretty good. You know, uh, anytime you close above half is usually considered good. 
and volume came in, lots of volume. Um, so here you go. Um, and you know, again, same thing. This uptrend, this this is the strongest stop in terms of technical from last year, right? For this year, probably not. But for from since last year, this is the strongest one. So that's why, like you know, it's a little bit, you know, um, yeah. If I go look at my, so let me see. Oh, I didn't download it. Let me go download it. the list from McBoss too here. Let me download this list. I just want to see where the number is, because Anet is keep coming up because of its strength in the last two weeks, right? And because it was over 100 before, now it's like near the top. Um, so Anet is coming up. Uh, but SMCI is always near the top. So ANET now is 33, right? So that's good. Um, SMCI, 12, okay? So, you know, so from October low, this is a price gain, 100%. So it's like almost six months, not quite. October 13, October to April 13, so that's six months. April will be six months. Yeah, and A net is sixty two percent, and most of these are more recent, right? So, so that's the difference. Uh, whereas SMCI has been, like I say, a leader since last year. So that's the difference, mm -hmm. and you know they're both good, like you know. But if I based on recent month, like, like this year, it will be A net. But if I include like since October, it will be SMCI. These are the two strongest stocks I have right now, and I'm planning to add more. Like now, now that's you know this stage two uptrend is clear now. It's more clear to me than ever, especially after this week. This week, what happened? Well, they all power higher. Look at that, right? If I go to uh, Anet, same thing. Like like most of the chips stop power higher, not just this two. But I'm just saying, like if I just look at this two, they both power higher. Uh, making new highs this week and but a net is like super strong like you know like right now it's super strong um it's now at the 20 percent profit taking level like i said for me i don't usually like i could like let's like say i take some but not like a, like i won't sell the whole thing for sure like instead I've, i'm gonna find ways to add to it if possible it's like it's like um that's why you know if you look at Charles Harris or even Jim Ropel, probably Charles Harris do this more than Jim Ropel because Jim Ropel he's 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 like he's more like into positioning. So as soon as he like like he's like a front runner type of guy. If he likes something and he thinks the market is going well and the stock's doing well, boom, he's all in, right? Um, and then he doesn't he doesn't trade as much around it. Whereas Charles Harris he will trade around it, which which what I feel I like to do more. I like to do what Charles Harris does, and so. Um, you know, as it goes up, unfortunately, you know, trading around it, you have to understand, right, the difference. With with Jim Ropel, you know, it's more about like long term thing. It's like, hey, stage two comes. Hey, I'm gonna hold this as long as I can at this level, and if it goes up to like I don't know, three hundred, let's say, eventually, uh, he's gonna make that huge gain, right? Whereas Charles Harris, he would like you know trade it, like he would, you know trade. 50% long and 50% is more short term and then he use that 50% to trade around the, the price point so he won't you know depends right how, how many times he able to trade those ins and outs and how well he does he could make more than Charles I mean more than Jim but it's harder that way because it's much harder to trade in and out right not everyone's yeah. not everyone's good at that so yeah, uh, I mean, you miss it. <laughs> yeah, if you don't watch it closely, you will miss it, right? Those pullbacks and bounce back, right? So if you, you know, so it's it's that's the thing, right? Like you have to watch closely. You're gonna do trading, uh, short term, like like he does. So um, but Jim Ropel, once he's in, he's in, like you know, um, so that's what he, he does, right? So so he you know he goes for the big gains, um, not the short term gains. He doesn't care about short term gains, um, so. Um, he owns what does he own right now? He owned very little SMCI. He missed the boat, or he wasn't paying attention to it. So here's the thing that I noticed: not many people watching SMCI. Very seldom. It was mentioned on Friday, but even throughout the whole week, not many people mentioned SMCI. I don't know why. Um, yeah, it's just something that I don't see many people follow, which is very interesting. Probably because if, you, like, I say if most people. They they watch stocks using like year to date calendar, right? 
So if you、mm. use a tool, they use you today. But you know, because I I I feel like we should always count from the bottom of the market. Because here's the thing:、mm-hmm. you want to know which institutions have been buying which stocks since the beginning. Like a stock that is very important、uh, on on someone's radar. They isn't isn't started like today or tomorrow. It started months ago, and they're watching those stocks. and And in that case, that's why I say SMCI to me is like,、um, you know, the 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 one that's been watched a lot, right? And it's it's also the most undercover、uh, stock. I mean, IBD covered. So here's what happened: IBD covered at the beginning of the year for one. After that article came out, literally the next week, it dropped big, and because of、um, A short a story、um, came out from another analyst who shorted it because he said that they are they are they are reporting on their numbers are not accurate. So, and that's where Jim got stopped out. I think it was yeah, I think it was early in the year,、uh, January. Yeah, I think it's right here, January nineteen. This big gap down.、Um, there was a sh- yeah, I'm pretty sure it's that day. There was a big、uh, story about, like I said, some analysts short it because they they look they see they feel like their numbers are not real. And Jim Robbins said, you know, a stock that comes back from it and bows to new highs, and you see the volumes coming in, there's no 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 problem with the numbers. If there is institution, one can jump back in, right? But at that time, he got stopped out. So he had a huge position, and he got stopped out. So he hasn't recovered much of it yet. He says he just have a small position.、Um, yeah. So those are the two top ones, but le- le- there's lots of chip stocks that are doing well.、Um, mm-hmm. So like, let's hunt for tech stocks again because I feel like that's still the leadership area right now. Not much has changed since a week ago.、Um, you know, let's just do that very quick here. Tech. Think ALGM. So、um, yeah, ALGM is another strong one, right? So I also own that.、Um, so here you go. So this guy is a IPO stock. Yeah, today we'll focus on weekly chart more, just because we really want to see where they are in the stages. So you can see this is like, you know, consolidation phase. You can call it, and it broke out. So now we're in stage two, right? So、uh, it's already up over twenty percent, thirty-six percent from this, this, or from here. This is where the handle is, but you know, doesn't matter like how many percent. But here, but it's already broke out. It's uh, you know, it has a five-week like it's not a base here, but it's a pullback. You can call it. It's not like it, technically it could be a base, but it was like really choppy here,、um, so it didn't count as a base. Um, again, strong numbers. So ALGM is one of them. Um, I just we're gonna look at all the chip stock first. It's they all related. Um, let me see. LSCC, yeah, that's another one I own. Um, so all these, you know, four stocks are at the top. Like I know there's lots of chip stock. Don't get me wrong, right? But this, you know, I'm I'm looking at it based on performance. So. Here again, this is the this is our st- you know the stage like basically stage. Again, I, I don't want to confuse you with what Mark, Mark Mini Winnie described as stage, but um, but Mark, this is basically Mark Mini Winnie stage. Stage one, we are in stage two now, right? So, yeah, strong numbers. Look at that. So, at the top, so that's this guy. So those four stocks are the. Oh, and R- I don't have RMBS. Let's take a look at this one.、Uh, oh yeah, this one is computer networking. Sorry, this is not chip, but it's it's kind of rambus. Okay, so this one is really strong too. I don't have this one, so、uh, I don't know why I don't have this one.、Um, let me check the earnings, future earnings. It's eighty-four percent. It's pretty good. So it's growing, right? Growing again from ne- it turned around story again.、Um, kind of. But but this one is actually projecting eighty four percent. So this this sh- should be on my list. Yeah, I'll take a screenshot on this. 
And usually what I do is I mark it up um, just for history purpose. So, let, so I'll show you what I do. I, I will mark it up. Before I buy a stock for a long term purpose, I always, I always make sure I record this because I want to see if how things change over time, especially if I'm holding it long term. Um, so, so here, like you know, it's not good because it's going negative. But this is a turnaround story. So I think that was the reason why, because I was more looking for stocks that already have positive uh, earnings. But the future is bright, right? Because it's estimated at 84% growth from a positive number, which means they will be growing around 24%, I don't know, uh, close to 30 cents next quarter. So that's pretty good numbers if that is the case. And so I'll write down 84% here. And then some of the key indicators is like, okay, is there a fund institution? Look at that, it's rising. So 495. Anytime you jump by 50, those are the ones that are usually uh you should pay notice. Look at RS line, it's going higher. You know, it's pretty obvious from the chart. Look at this daily like weekly volume here. Three three, four bars, another one. <laughs> look at the volume on the downside. Nothing. Not much. Right? Look at this. This is all accumulation. Canvas. I might add this to my 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 list now, cause um yeah, so it looks look at all how tight is trading on the weekly chart. This is like perfect for holding long term. Not much volatility. Uh, forty four dollar stock, four billion cap, ninety nine composites earning uh rating. Really strong. The other oh you know, I, okay so I will go to uh, A net for a second. There's something that Jim Ropel points out. Why A net? might be the next biggest leader he said this is super unusual up down volume ratio 3.2 meaning there's every day that was up mm -hmm. compared to the day it was down the volume average is three times more on the upside okay that's unusual he said um that's very unusual. Like it's hard to tell from just looking at the chart here, but that's how it's measured. Like most stocks, he said, you you see two two times ratio is already incredible. He said this is this is abnormal. Like this is like something is happening to this stock. Um, so he pointed that out, right? Um, I don't usually pay attention to this because I say most of them are, you know, if I look at SMCI, one point six, right? If you look at uh, mm -hmm. Rambus. 1.2. You see, you won't find many even above two. He said, like it's very seldom you even see a two times ratio, whereas this one is three times ratio. Say 1.5. So something is happening with ANAT. This could be the next big big leader. He said. Um, so so I'm like I say I'm I'm trying to right now. It's so strong that there's no way to you know um to buy in right now. It's just too extended. But if there's any mm -hmm. pullback, right? You like I, I'm gonna be buying. Like I'm gonna add more because I I don't have too many of this position, so um, it's, it sucks in that sense. <laughs> I I want to have more position of this stock, but this is a a strong leader, really strong. Okay, so Rambus is a good one to look at. Um, I don't have that. Um, let me see what other chip stock. Pi, um. And then ASML, PI is you know, manpower, right? Those guys are not bad. They're pretty strong too. I'll just color this yellow for now. Um, yeah, GFS is starting to move up to you. It's now 87. It was way above 100 before, like even 200. It's starting to, we'll take a quick look at this. We won't go into detail now because it'll take too long. So PI, yeah, slowly moving up. Right, 200 day. Look at the 200 day. Just you know, 50 day, right? Relative strength. The volume side not as much on the upside. Um, what's the next one? ASML. But they they all doing well. So they all in the top hundred. So yeah, this one is some volume here. Uh, the earnings picture is not as good though. Um. But it's still, still in the top hundred. Uh, manpower. Yeah, look at this. Look at how tight this cup handle handle is. 
So this is really tight. This is almost a base itself. Wait, that's that's impressive. Wait, yeah. I I think this is uh, and the numbers are good. I think the numbers are good. Let me check. I don't know manpower. Um, check here. Manpower. Twenty two percent. Okay. That's that's probably why I didn't buy it. I never bought into the stock. It's like it has decreased a lot. So set eighty, seventy one, fifty, twenty two, that's the forecast. I mean it's still making money, it's just not it's just slowly decreasing. I don't know, they'll probably beat it. But it's just, you know, decreasing. So uh GFS, the last one we'll look at here. Wow, this is volatile chart. <laughs> That's the first thing that stand out to me. Every week, look at that. The, the swing is crazy. Um, but it is on the uptrend. And it's building a small base right now. And yeah, this is very volatile. I do like, look at the volume pattern. All the red ones. And then you can see all the blue ones here. So... Yeah, it's, it's it's not bad. Like it's a good chart. Like I said, it's it's been rising on my list. Um, now it's within the top hundred now. So, so I don't. This is new name too, right? It's IPO. So, so yeah, I think this could be uh, uh something to watch out for too. Um, I know even last year, Gene Kramer talking about this stock a lot, but it has kind of be under the radar now for a while. No one talks about it as much anymore. But it's been rising. So I know, um, yeah, and that, and that cup. This is a, a, a like I know it doesn't look like it, but it is a cup, cup with high handle pattern, which usually is bullish. So um, if it works out, it will be bullish. Like this one fell. See, cup high like well, it's not really a handle, but it fell here. Um, same thing. See, this is the same thing. Cup, not really a handle, but it fell here. But this is a, a clear handle now. Well, I guess you could consider this a handle too. But if this one fell, I don't know if this will fail again. But it looks better than the previous ones, especially this last week it bounced. Um, so that's a good sign. Okay, so lots of stock. See, this is why I'm saying, right? Like, if you look at this picture here, it almost seems like there's no downtrend. Um, okay, so we'll just go down the list here. Inter computer software financial um this stock is super strong i i'm long this now uh i i don't even know this company that well i'm going to do more research hopefully this weekend it says here cloud based ai power software solutions for the financial and professional service industry it's just i i don't know the ai word probably you know but the the here's the thing right it's all negative last year now it's positive and it has a good uh, earnings projection and this stock is like on a tear look at this like like for a small cap this is impressive chart pattern like like, like when I say to chart look at every time it pulls back right on a weekly basis um, one week one week even the two weeks here are so tight look at that one week Two weeks. Look at this two weeks again. Tight. Look at how tight it is. Closing like within one week. One week. This stock is crazy. Uh, I don't. I, I don't even hear people talking about this stock right now. So, like I say, it's like an unknown stock. It's very powerful. Um. Yeah, really strong. Okay, fastly. Um. Yeah, this is an old name, but it's, it is doing really well. Like, look at, look at, again, look at how tight it is, sitting above the 50 day. Like, you know, like the, the, the only thing is like the earnings picture is not as, as strong as the other guys. So, but something is happening to this stock. It's just holding really strong. Um, yeah. So, I'm short, I'm just doing a short trading on that one. Um, Hames. This name comes up a lot, like every so on and off. Um, software, medical, in the health sector. 
um yeah it looks really good it's not the best earnings though i think it's a turnaround story but the sales look at the sales it just keep growing so so it's like going at 100 percent almost that's pretty good right um i don't know i don't think i have a story on that uh, that's one thing i like to do now anytime um you know if there's any any new names i like to know their story before i buy them if possible um sometimes i'll buy them before i know something about it but usually very rare so, so this one i don't have the story um but yeah him's and hers help interesting it's near the top um pdfs i'm trading in and out of this again this computer software design group is also a lot, a lot of the tech groups are doing well uh look at this guy just week by week just climb week by week climb week by week climb right like this is a really good and steady hole and it's not even like like i said like not even slow the slope is pretty strong look at that slope 45 degree angle look at these numbers wow um i think it okay i just want to make sure it is coming down a bit because i i didn't put this on my long list so let's see what the earnings look like pdfs um has to be above here maybe high actually 56 percent yeah that's not bad like that's not bad anything over 50 percent growth that's pretty good yeah this could be on a long list too like i did you see this is the thing when you look at daily charts sometimes you don't see the scope of the growth um but when you look at it on weekly chart it's very clear right um they're on a you know see this is the stage one right here broke out now we're on stage two so so this is a strong like really strong stock and really good Look at the up down volume ratio yeah very few see this one's above two and you can see look, look at this volume like all the blue bars sticking out right so yeah something is happening in this group the whole group is doing really well like cdns i'll just i don't know if this sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't no it doesn't work cdns i'll just go through this because they, they're all in the same group yeah see they're all on the uptrend right now like right anss this one is also strong look at this one wow like this is a small like oh well, not small 27 it's not as strong like the earnings are not as strong as um you know as this guy but this this is yeah this is amazing actually xm um yeah this one keep popping up it's a uh, old name too you see long downtrend it's like fastly these are the older names but they're doing so well look at that the number is probably coming back up look at this it's coming back up so let me see the pro projection here. XM. Okay, zero percent. It it went down. It was po positive before. It now went down to zero. Um. So. I yeah, because the earnings get revised all the time, and uh, unless you fall in the company super close. Um like using a software like this tells you so it's easier um but anyhow so so that's that one uh perry do you still own perry perry yes yeah mm -hmm. yeah this is also good this is in the advertising business uh very steady look at that super steady nice uptrend yeah this is the stage one right here yeah this is a strong stock you know like that's a strong volume there even on the down week it's like close in the upper like middle range so that's pretty good and yeah perion uh very consistent you see the earnings and let me see the projection here uh, 14 percent it went down slightly because previous week, I sort them, right? 
every week it, it get moved. So it was eighteen percent. Now it's like fourteen percent. So it got revised down a little bit. Um, yeah, it's still good. It's just slowing down a little bit. But yeah, for like this is this is like on a nice uptrend. Uh, Octa Security. I own I own PNW. Um, Octa is good too. Um, but the earnings is not as strong. But it's it's definitely on the uptrend. Like, so again, these are older names that has dropped a lot. Now it's an uptrend. I go to PNW. That one is um, yeah. So right here, it's a nice tra trajectory. Look, how, it won't like look how tight this is trading. This is unbelievable tight. Like, yeah. And I like I like the numbers. That's where it, just look at this compared to Octa. But Octa is um, pretty sure it's small cap. Yeah, thirteen versus fifty-seven. Um, where is it? Where is PNW? It's farther down, hundred and fifty-eight. Slowly climbing. It's slowly climbing. <laughs> uh, I have that. Oh, you have that. Okay, good, good. Uh, yeah, I prefer Pan and W more than Octa. Uh, STM another. So this one comes out a lot on Jim Ropel's screening. Um, very nice. Look at this tight, tight, tight weekly chart. Wow, that's as tight you can get. This is nice. Uh, I think the future earnings not as strong. I remember. Nineteen. Okay, it has dropped. See, twenty-seven, nineteen. So it's nineteen now. It's starting to drop more and more. I don't know why. I know Buffett sold some shares this quarter. Um, because he owns it. I don't know if he sold all of it or not, but he sold some. That's why. Yeah. So, and then, oh, after I heard that news, I don't. I didn't want to own this anymore. Like not not because of him, but I feel like sometimes he has a big influence, right? So. But I'm sure the stock can still do well. I just don't think it will do as well. But it is 43 on my list, so just so you know. So performance-wise, it's still really good. And like I said, um, it's just holding up so tight here. That's also another good sign. ANSS, we talked about that. Uh, so these are all good. Um, SE. Yeah, this is an older name. Uh, it's kind of like Fastly. For me, I'm I'm I'm, you know, I'm I'm less re I'm more re like I'm not I'm not as keen on buying older names. Um, yeah, just yeah. yeah, just because it has huge overhead, right? So that's one thing Jim Ropel will say. Why would you buy? <laughs> he said this the other day. He said, if anyone asks me a question about buying older names, I'm gonna cancel your subscription. He said that. <laughs> because he said there's so many new names and so many names that are doing so well without overhead. Why would you go buy an old name with overhead, right? And you know, of course, there's gonna be exception. But but if you if you just all keen on buying older names, like you're not gonna do as well. Is what because most of the, the the big growth happened in new names, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so not saying they can't go up, but they're just not going to become the leader. Like they're not going to go up many times and stuff. Very few of them will do it. Um, you know, Nvidia is definitely one that's doing it right now. It's coming back, but not many will be that strong. Um, so so this is an older name, but it's doing really strong. You see, it has the highest volume. So remember what Mark Minimini said. When it starts uh, 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 stage one and it breaks out of stage two, into stage two, so here's the base here, cup one. Um, it's gonna you're gonna see the highest volume come in, and that's what we saw there, like super high volume. So so this is you see it's positive now. I don't know. Let me see the future one. It's probably positive too. I just don't know how much the number is. Um, don't think it was that high. Let me go down. To it's probably from a negative. Uh, I separate the ones that are have negative earnings previously versus the one that have. Uh, um, so I don't. Again, that's another thing I don't do. I don't trade stocks that have. I wouldn't trade long long stocks that have like this is what we talked about last time. You asked me this question. If a stock have negative earnings last year, uh, would and they, but they're turning positive, like kind of like Nvidia. Would would I would I trade them right? Uh, long term, very hard for me to do it because you know it's kind of the same philosophy. Like, like Nvidia is a good example. Like even if it does turn positive, will I um, trade it? Only 
like if I really believe in that stock, like I know that stock inside out. I can't find the stock right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, so 165%. So this is from a negative earnings, right? So, so if I go look at this, negative 80, 100% means it go to zero. 65, 165 means it will go to like around 60 cents, let's say. Something like that, 50 cents. So it will turn to like, so it will be very close to this previous number. So this is a turnaround story, right? Do you want to like so? Th the question is like, do I trade this short term or long term? Um, usually, I will trade them short term first, just to see if they work. If it does work and it's not continue to that trend, then maybe I'll turn it long term. But like I said, there's so many stocks that already have more than one quarter or two quarters of growth. I might as well focus on those ones, right? Plus, this one has huge overhead. That's the problem here. It's not going to go up as fast as those guys. Um, yeah, so that's SE. Hubs. So this name keep coming up. Like on IBD screens, every time they have the, you know, every day almost Hubs. And people like this stock. I, I personally find it like, you know, very more volatility. You can see the weekly swing is much higher. But it's a good stock. Like So the so this, look at the volume dry up, right? Uh, and then here, look, look at this, this is three weeks of volume here. Super high volume right there. Numbers are really growing. Um, hubs, what is it? Fifty-two percent again, over fifty-two percent. This is a good one to put on long term, I think. Let me take a screenshot of this. Uh, this is also in marketing. Yeah, it's almost similar to uh, Perion. So yeah, this social media. Yeah, so um, might have huge growth here. At least the, right now, you see it's, it's growing pretty fast. Um, sales decline a bit, but still around 20-30%. Um, yeah, high volume there, high volume. Um, yeah, lots of high volume. Um, okay, so this part I don't like so much. It has decrease in institution. Um, I think that was the reason why I never bought this stock. Is that decrease in institution, which is weird. Usually you don't see that in growth stock. So that probably why I never I never bought this stock. But anyhow, a lot of people like it. It also have a high overhead because this is not a new name. Um, so yeah, anyhow. So that's that's why I this this is why I always like do those analysis before I even put it on my list because sometimes you you miss one thing it could be could be the reason uh, between one stock and another. Okay, so that's hubs, PD page duty. A lot of people like page duty again. Old name, uh, coming back yeah. strong. Um, like this is this is good numbers right now. It's turned around story, but it's turning around fast. Stable growth, so we're similar to hubs. We're similar again. Look at this. I don't know why it's decreasing. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know why it's decreasing. Like, it shouldn't decrease in institutions. Like, if people really believe in the story of this company, like, it has look at look at next quarter 325. So, it's a turnaround story. So, it will be uh, eight cents again, eight cents. So like I said, it's a good, good turnaround story, but it's just, it seems like people taking profit. Again, that's why it's tougher to buy stocks that are older names because some of them want to get out, you know? Some of them might be like, hey, hey, hey I'm down this downtrend. As soon as it get up to this point, I'm going to sell, you know? And so they want to get out, right? And so that's why this, this is what I'm talking about, like the overhead that, that Jim Ropel always talks about. It's, yeah. um, it's much harder to go up because the old guy is going to want to get out as soon as they get some of their money back, you know? And so that's the reason. So I just want to highlight this um, this number here. So okay. Let me see what else there. Okay, this thing keep coming up. Squarespace. You know them, the, right? I see them on commercial all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. This is the owner name to you. Um, ninety nine percent. Is that positive? No, that's not positive. 
um, it's it's from a negative number. So it's a turnaround story. Um, it's still in the negative because it's ni negative ninety nine, and I mean ninety nine. It's not hundred, so it's still gonna be negative. But it has like lots of volume lately. I, I don't know if there's any news. Um, yeah. Oh, I think I turn off the earnings. Here. Put it back up. Okay, report earnings that week. That's probably why it jumps so much. But yeah, I don't know. Um, it's still negative. I don't touch negative earnings stock. That's usually my rule of thumb, unless I know the stock inside out. Nvidia is a good example of that. Um, but I don't know this company well enough to to own it, even though it might be turning around. Monday, so name. Okay, let's look at Bear, Big Bear AI. Um, it's obviously small cap 300 200 million whoa look at this breakdown holy smokes <laughs> this this is the problem with small cap stock right it runs crazy it goes down crazy it's so hard to trade these stocks i mean you gotta have the guts to do this stuff um so but yeah look at monday monday oh yeah monday. Did, did we skip over that I didn't mess up. Now Monday, yeah, same around, right? Same thing here. Turn around story, consistent sales. Uh, one high weekly volume here. This week was down week. Um, same thing. Look, see, this is the problem with overhead. People selling as it comes back up, mm -hmm. right? right yeah. So, oh, I don't like seeing that, you know. That's the same problem, you know. This is the problem with overhead stock. It's most of them will get sold into strength because people want their money back. And then they'll move it to newer names. It's, uh, yeah, I don't like it. Okay. So that's Monday. Yeah, I mean. So I think uh, I'll look at PATH because I, I know this company, like, you know, from work, like UI PATH, but it's a, you know, I'm pretty sure it's IPO two years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he does have a huge overhead. So that's a hard, same thing. It's hard to trade these stocks. Um, look, see, look at this. It's going yeah, down. It's right? So that's, that's the tough one. This is why, even though they have bounced back, but a lot of them will get so into strength. Um, so yeah, it's really hard to trade those stocks. All right, I think I think we have exhausted the, the good ones now. So we'll see how things go uh, on on the tech side, but the chips are dominant, and then some new players. But we need to see um, like everything, right? Not just tech. We need to see everything expand, and we haven't seen that. That's the that's the problem. Um, let me let me just highlight quickly here. Um, all the uptrend guys because that that's those are the only one I want to look at it's ones that are in uptrend or near uptrend and uh, there's, there's no point wasting time on stock that are in downtrend right now um, so let me go back here and just take it take out technology because we already looked at that so here you go so all look at all these guys at the top they're all uptrend which is good this is what I'm talking about they're all setting up okay so two a week or two ago um things were going down and i told you there was like so little of my stocks like, like only 50 or something out of like 400 it's in in this in this category now they all came back up we talked about that last week and now look at this it's all like so many look at this this is insane oh no because i feel to them sorry that's why i feel I, I didn't take this out this is my fault okay here you go. There you go. Now it makes more sense. <laughs> uh, we have more uptrends now. It's still not as much. Like if I go back, sorry, I should have counted. Um, how many now? Eighty-one. Okay, it's it's rising, not as fast. Like it should be like two hundred. That's what it should be. Out of four hundred. Uh, you know. Um, yeah, I think I have four hundred. Yeah, four hundred. So. It's still a very weak market. Uh, we want to see more stocks go back up. To it. EXAS, Medical, ELF. So ELF, I own ELF, and uh, it did really well this week. Um, 
it's probably the besides a net this week like it's an smci this is the i mean my third stock that's do well it was a big jump this week broke out right um yeah really happy about it um because of onon right let's jump to onon um i'm sure i have it on that list too so i missed this i wish i bought it I was like, ah, oh, because it wasn't on my radar that day. That's why I knew it was reporting, but I wasn't planning to buy it. Like that was the problem. And then I hesitate and then I miss it. I think that day was up 28%. Wow. Yeah. In the morning. Yeah. In the morning, it was only up 10%. I was looking at it. I was looking at it. And I believe Wednesday, it was, what day was this? Tuesday. Oh, okay. It was, it was the good day. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it was the good day. Tuesday was a good update. Um, yeah, I hesitated. Jim Ropel jumped into this. <laughs> he said he that day's trading volume, he did five percent of it. Uh wait, that's a lot of shares uh on, on daily volume. Uh he bought a lot of this. Yeah, he's in good he's in good money right now. Because it just keeps going up. Like on Thursday it went up how much more? Twelve percent that day. Friday. Um why does it say zero? Something's wrong with this. Yeah, there's something wrong with that. It shouldn't say zero. Oh yeah, there's something wrong with this. Anyhow. Um yeah. So it's up like, you know, from the breakout is already through. so this is like powerful, right? Because like, you know, I own elf. And they're both in the oh this is in the shoes and and um so the retail stocks right now we're talking about so you know elf is a cosmetic personal care um all the cosmetic personal care did well this week i believe cody was the other one c o t y yeah so it bounced um and then like retail um like for shoes and stuff on did really well um the crocs also did well i believe okay maybe not not this one Decker's, i think they said Decker's as well. Decker, yeah here you go Decker's. so so some of the shoes companies are doing well this week yeah hold on i miss it uh it's right here um so let's see the accent yes help oh no is there any stocks you want to look at it's just going down this this here no, so you have so it's a mixed range right now. You can see uh, security, aerospace, um, yeah, and then let's see here. And okay, so another thing that went up this week was pretty sure solar went up this week. I don't know if they did okay yes. on Friday or not. Like first solar, but then it again came back down. Yeah, and again face came back. So here, so yeah, I closed at the top of the week. Really, this stock is crazy. Uh, I don't like the earnings numbers, like, but it is the top performance stock in the group. Um, that's the only reason I don't trade this one. It's just I don't like the earnings picture. But it's a very strong stock. Okay, so this has a, you know, um, downside reversal. So I don't like that, but it's okay still. It's holding about 10 days. Uh, let's go look at end phase. I think end phase came back up a little bit. Okay, it went back down again. See, this is the problem, right? Like, this is why, you know, this is why, like, when the stock goes into a downtrend, this is why, this is why I have this column. When it goes into a downtrend, don't even look at it. Because if you look at it, what happens is you're going to get caught in those small bounce, right? And then it get, it get turned around again, like, many times before, it, like, you don't know which time you're going to succeed. So you're going to end up wasting like a lot of money just trying to find the one that's going to work. Mm -hmm. And and so here's it doesn't work. Here's the, look, look at how many times it just keep bouncing off this 50 day. Um, you know, like I know it has strong fundamentals. That's why we even look at it. But the problem is the technical picture is just weak right now. Like, like, I mean, you know, every time you buy on the bounce, you're going to get killed. Like, you know, like you buy on this bounce, you got killed. You buy on this bounce, you got killed. You buy on this bounce, you got killed. Uh, yeah, like I, I would stay out of a downtrend pattern 
until like I'd rather buy it much higher than to keep getting chop up. <clears throat> so that's that's the problem. Like mini so I was so disappointed. Like this is the third time I trade this stock. I just couldn't make make a move. And now it's on the downtrend, right? So here, see? Like you can see my green. I bought here, boom, it's got shaken out, bought here, shaken out, bought here, shaken out. Like I gave up. Like I'm giving up now. Like, you know, because it's just not working. And um you know, maybe it will bounce next, but it didn't bounce on Friday, so that's really negative. This is super negative. Uh even though volume is not there, we'll see. But I won't touch this until it comes back up on uh, above 10 day. So, you know, you see, it's trying to write the 10 day as it goes down. And that's why I was like, okay, maybe I'll bounce. Oh, okay, maybe I'll bounce. But now it's really clear it's under the 10 day now. So I won't touch it anymore. Um, So those are ones that I fell this week, you know. And uh, TGL is another one. See, now it's a, in a clear downtrend. But... um. And let's go look at it. Like I really like the fundamentals of this stock, uh, but it's been a couple of times now it fell for me. Like every time, look, see, it's still riding the ten day. Is there, this one is better than Miniso because it at least bounced on Friday uh, from the fifty days. So I'm watching this closely. If this is the bottom, and then Monday maybe I'll buy back in. I'm not sure yet, but I have to be careful because they are on the downtrend, but it's riding the ten day down. So we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'd rather buy it much higher than getting shaken out again. Um, yeah, uh, XR, ERJ, those are good stocks too. Um, okay, so let's go down here. MKTX, oh man, every time I see this stock, I, <laughs> I'm like, why didn't I buy this? <laughs> just, I don't know, we might have pulled back a little bit. Yeah, it did pull back a little bit this week. So last week we were talking about how five days up, it pulled back. Very close, see? It almost made a new high on Friday. I don't know if it did. Really close. It should put a, It didn't. Yeah, I don't think it did. 386. Okay, so I should say a look by point. Like, because this, this now it pulls back, bouncing off the 10 day. Unfortunately, I don't like where Friday it didn't hit a new high. Usually you want to see like a definite bounce. Uh, and it didn't do it. So I don't know. We'll see. But it is really tight pattern base so this is go up so much and then you know and then it trade really tight here uh w highest volume came in right here i don't know if there was news that's interesting um yeah this is for trading because the the earnings just not strong enough for me to go long term but this is a good short term trading um Still lots of downtrend stocks right now. Um, this one, XPOF. Okay, so XPOF, I took a, a long term position. I have Wing too. Wing also did well this week. Um, so but let's look at XPOF. Oh, Wing did okay. I think it did okay. XPOF. This is um, I I I had to find the story here, cause um that's why I got into it. I gotta go search for it. It's the largest global franchise of fitness brands. Largest. Operate in 48 states and 18 countries. Opened 511 studios in 2022. Wow. That's huge. Like, that's a lot of stores in one year. You know? And uh, this is an IPO stock. Uh, look at the turnaround story here. Like, you know, look at this positive turnaround. You know, look at the sales growth. One billion cap, small cap, still small cap. Twenty-eight dollar, but this, this, like you know, goes up here, build this base. This is base one. Now we on, you know, pretty much a, a new uptrend now, uh, stage two, and it's just riding. It's a little bit more volatile than usual. It is. It has more swings. Um, but for small cap, that's the difference. I do differentiate between small and, and medium and big cap. Like I, you know, the small caps, you only expect volatility. And so, you know, you might have to have bigger stop loss if you want to hold. Uh, definitely daily trading even more crazier. You know, see, look at this, all these gap downs and gap ups and stuff. It's like even more crazier. Um, but 
yeah but they like weekly chart you can see it's is holding the 50 day pretty much since the run and so you just have to you know it's not going to be easy to hold um so this is uh you know it's harder to hold still but this is has superb fundamental story and yeah it's, it's you know yeah i have a very small position on this but but you know so one of the things that i i also buying small caps now is because um besides the bigger caps is because i want to see um and their smaller positions um i want to see if they if they will grow right if those guys can grow maybe it's kind of a representation of uh, russell um if it's, there are small caps that can grow fast and stuff because we talk about this a bull market will only start if based on previous uh president that i study is that they always lead by nasdaq and russell 2000 so right now obviously they like we talk about this, it's going opposite direction right um so at some point and i'm hoping at some point it will happen soon is the russell 2000 will start to move up and the smaller cap guys like these guys are are, are riding a backward trend like a downstream uh, uh you know upstream right and they still can go up when russell is not doing that well imagine if russell is doing well like these small caps are going to fly um you know because they have superb story this guy like this is probably the best story I've heard so far uh, of all the all the like you know companies in terms of small cap. Um, anyhow, like you, I even like it better than Elf now. But again, it is still very young and junior. So and we and Russell is not doing well. Same as Elf, it's very hard to hold. Even that one is hard to hold. Um, so but that's the thing about you know younger stocks. They they tend to be more volatile. Wing. Oh, this is uh Jim Rothwell's favorite. Like not favorite, but like he likes this company. <laughs> he likes the wings there. Uh, really strong fundamentals. Um, yeah, this is more like a you know it's not. It's kind of a little bit volatile. Like there's a couple of volatile weeks here. Um, it's not a you know a very smooth chart. Um, but it's doing well. It's moving up. You know, like this week, despite. Despite the market, it's moving up, which is a good sign. So, um, OR. Okay, so I took a position in this. And the only reason I took this position is I don't have any goal, right? And the goal is strong, right? Um, GLD, let's look at goal. It's strong. Like, even this week, like, like it bounced back. Like, if you go look at the daily chart, see? It pulled back Tuesday. It bounced back Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday it dropped a little bit. I don't like this is broken out this GLD, so that's why this is bullish. Like Jim Ropel has lost his shares in this, and he said that he will keep adding if this continues. Um, buying gold is not for the fundamentals. This is all momentum, so so you're not gonna see any good fundamentals. But but it broke out. And you know, volume's there. Pull back is lighter volume. There you go. Mm -hmm. Technical picture is perfect. Um, and so I own OR for that reason. I I didn't buy any bigger gold stock. The only reason this came out on my radar is a Montreal-based company um, that is engaging in the you know managing assets for gold sector. So I don't really understand the business model, but um, this stock came out on the radar because. It's just doing really well, and you know, um, yeah, it's holding well, it's moving up. Um, yeah, young company. So this is in my small cap portfolio now. Um, we'll see if go if go continues pattern, and this is the this is the only one that like many go stocks have negative earnings. This is a like very one of the few that have positive. Um, so if I go look at OR. Let me see if I can find it. Oh no, it was from a negative. I should look at it first. It's probably from a negative. Oh, now it dropped. See? Okay, so it was positive and then it dropped. So it's been revised down to negative. So that's not good. Um, There you go. 
right? 0.14 before. Now it's going to be slightly lower, right? So, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, honestly, you don't, it's like, I was thinking of holding for long term, but probably not anymore. <laughs> now that the number has changed. So, um, there you go. It's hard to, like I said, it's all strictly for momentum, for goal. Um, because it's as soon as the, like, I, I can't remember, the CPI data will come out in April 12 or something like that. If the CPI decrease a lot, like, or gold is going to tank. Okay, so right now, like, you know, inflation and the bank stories, if those things subside, gold is going to tank. So that's why, like, I'm not as bullish as Jim Ropel is on gold. Um, he really likes gold. He's always thinking gold is the thing. Um, but I don't know. It's just having a hard time um, breaking the 2000 level. Um, that's the thing I, everyone talks about. So... Right, if I go to gold price here, it's, it's the two thousand is the 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 like the yeah see nineteen seventy eight. So I it, it think it tried it tried to get close to two thousand. It didn't pass it. Yeah, it was not able to close above. Yeah, so he's he he's like everyone's watching this number, you know. But I think like for it to happen, it has to be something drastic like macro wise, um, because it hasn't happened for so long. That's why. Like, how do you see this chart? 19, high, low. Anyhow, I'm confused by this chart. Probably the yellow one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, blue. Oh, I don't get it. Spot go. Spot go yellow. Yeah, it's this guy. Yeah, so it's, it's 1970, 19, uh, whatever, 1978, right? So, um, Thing here, oh, I can't click on it, but it, it came close to 2000. I think I don't know if it passed it, but anyhow, it's just not there yet. Uh, but everyone's watching it, so um, so I think if that happens, something bad is gonna happen, right? So, uh, also, also, also Jim Ropel also talked about TIP, which is the inflation uh, bond, bond uh, protection, and he's like, if this thing. If this thing crossed 200 day and stay above it, something drastic has happened. So, um, so that's something to watch out for. Okay, it means the like. So he, Jim Robel mentioned that he's less worried about what the Fed thinks now, um, of the future fund rate, and he's also less uh, worried about the U.S. dollar stuff. He's more worried about this. And he said that, you know, this has, so right here, you can see the market test this two times, now, 110, 110, again on Friday, 110. It passed it, it make a new high, but look at it reverse, right? So this, he said that the tips is like US way of protecting against inflation. If this get out of hand, this is kind of related to like the credit default swap stuff that uh, Deutsche Bank and all these other big banks may have issues with. Um, so he said, if this thing like goes above this, like you know, take off, we we're gonna start seeing big bank issues. Okay, so that's what he's worried about. Um, that's why he's he's really big into gold right now because he's he said that there's you know some of these technical pictures is pointing like something big is gonna happen, and he's worried, right? So 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 he talked about this. Uh, which I didn't even pay attention to before, uh, because, because you know, but this is like directly related to like treasury and stuff like that, um, and and yeah, so, um, yeah, let me see anything name any other names. Um, he talked about race. Jim Mopel also talked about race. Um, he's saying how, um, the world. It's not in that bad of a shape because of companies like Ferrari. Look at this stock, right? It's like in high level, um, mm -hmm. like almost new high zone. It's like if the rich having problems, they wouldn't be buying Ferraris, okay? Um, and then he look at another stock is uh, L V U M Y. Is it? Uh, um, 
how you and why? Uh, it's the one that sell uh, high end brand purses or something. Um, Louis Vuitton, L V U M Y. L V M U I. There you go. Louis Vuitton. I I only remember the first two letters. <laughs> um, again, high brand name clothes and purses and stuff. Look at where the stock set. So he said, if there's a recession, why are these stocks going up like this, right? Uh, rich people you t are, are more like, you know, um, when you say rich, you say, you know, people who can afford this stuff, they tend to, you know, will cut down on this stuff if, if there's a recession, you know. Um, so it hasn't happened. So that's why he's like, oh. So he doesn't see... The recession maybe not as bad as people think, you know. Um, so, so Yamsi, this one is uh, the China KFC, right? Um, I ch I train and out the stock many times. It's doing really well. Um, I don't know why I don't have it long term. Um, they're growing big in China, and it's like the growth is significant here. Um, Okay, I wrote a note. Very volatile week to week. Hard to hold. Yes, you can see the string. Right? And even like as it goes up here, like I think it's because it's a China related stock. They tend to be more volatile. Um I don't know why, but it is. So I just I I don't want to trade long term. It's it's only like really short term trading. But it's a really good stock. It's been doing well. Um number eighty six here. Oh, uh, yeah. Looks good. Lots, like I said, lots of stocks. Um, you know, but we need more broad leadership. That's where we're missing right now. Like, you know, oh, the other area that did really well, which I didn't talk about, is uh, the the health sector. Um, so if we look at like say XBI. Oh, maybe it didn't. Hmm, this one did really poorly. Okay, maybe it's the large cap. Let me see. Maybe the IBV might be better. I don't know. Yeah, slightly better. Not that much better. Um, but a lot of health stocks were doing okay this week, I find. Uh, but but XBI, the biotech, didn't do as well. Um, so, for example, I own Lentius. Okay, it pulled back. It went up the first two days, and, and then it kind of pulled back a little bit. But it's a look at this bounce. I like this bounce. That's really good. Uh, yeah. Let me set my alert here. It's uh, 8175. 8175. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's a bounce there. I like that bounce. Um, look at this stock. It's coming to new high. Um, we talked about this last week, so I'm not going to go into the story again. Um, but it's uh it's very interesting. It's a big cup base. It's reset to cup one. Um, you don't see this happen a lot. Like where where like so this is the big uptrend, right? This is like the stage two thing, and then um like this is a leader last year, um and this is a big big run right here. Like you know because of the earnings and stuff, um. And then it just kind of goes sideways more, like, and then go up more. Like this thing never took a break from, you know, from two thousand. You know what I'm saying? And it just, like, okay, now it reset, right? And even this, like, like the digestion. I think this is the biggest digestion, right? Yeah. So if you follow Mark Milley, this would be like stage three right here, right? Stage three right here, and then stage four is coming down. Uh, but this is a very nice digestion, like you know. Um, so the it did correct forty six percent, so quite severe, you know, not as bad as others. And now it's coming back to the new high, like that's crazy. And obviously, you know, this is the numbers here, like super triple, triple, triple digit. And next quarter, just to confirm, thirty two percent. So it's it's going down, 
um let's see 32 percent of 97 cents so it'll be along 130 um so which is in line with last quarter's number um so it obviously won't be going a triple digit as fast anymore because of the huge numbers but probably they'll beat it we'll see um yeah last quarter they beat by 42 percent so that's a big beat so they have products that are going crazy right now so um the other one is shockwave this one is probably okay it's not as good it's coming back up so this week again it bounced um so it's like you know still in the base um again this stock it has strong fundamentals triple digit triple digit um 100 yeah see 100 percent growth next quarter so it's like continue the path so it'll be like seven eighty cents roughly double shockwave yeah like it's still like so here's the thing the, like um the 200 day is still going upward you see this right it's still going upward uh 50 day is turning around so that's what we hope to see we, like, we hope to, to turn up and so it's, it's, it has a correction here um yeah and the fundamental story is strong um earnings are look at the institution sponsor it jumped over 50 see whenever i see over 50 institutions buy like jump in a quarter that's a huge thing um just because that you know it's not just a few right like you have that many analysts liking that stock like that's that makes a big difference and and now we have this big correction um and now it's moving like it's still moving really slow but we'll see it, it's starting to move like so this is the this is the trajectory now uh we'll see if it follows that so friday you see it's trading really tight i like it um even on the pullback here so it's really tight um there's more blue volume bar sticking out here so like not as strong as lentils for sure but um yeah there's lots of um i think regeneron was another one that pop up on ibd screen here you go see that like you know look at the volume so it break out so a lot of people are looking at i don't think it has a strong earnings feature that's why it might not be on my list so for health stocks i tend to be less focused on earnings but better to focus on earnings you know um depends like i'm more focused on technical picture but the earnings still has to be like not too bad like this one is not it's kind of slowing down but the regeneron is a big big cap right 90 billion um so this is a run right here so if you can't catch one of those run that'll be nice but otherwise it's pretty choppy um there's a few others i don't remember health is okay yeah but i think you know as we saw tech and retail discretionary are the two strongest um yeah we'll just have to look at more stories see if we find any new stocks um so i don't have any new tech names xpuff we talk about um yeah uh let me see anything on this side no 